What are we called? The list of all possible inputs? Domain. The domain. The list of all possible outputs? Range. Is the range. Um, and then we've been looking at function notation, plugging into that. Today we are still looking at acceptable inputs and acceptable outputs given different context. So it says here, earlier we saw a function representing the area of a square and another, the revenue of a tennis camp. Refer to the descriptions of those functions to answer these questions. It says, here's a graph that represents function A. So we're looking at area of a square. And it's defined by A of S equals S squared, where S is the side length of a square in centimeters. Name three possible input-output pairs. So what are they really asking for if they're asking for an input-output pair? Ordered pair? An ordered pair. They want three X and Ys, three ordered pairs. So looking at this graph, can anybody find three ordered pairs? So it's not... F so 5 and 25 is definitely one. So the thing is, a lot of these aren't hitting exactly on crosshairs. Mm -hmm. It's what I, I call them. So like where this, this X value goes horizontal, the Ys go vertical. Like this almost looks like it's on a crosshair, but it's not. This one's not. This one's not. No. 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 7 and 50 actually isn't either. Um... <coughs> the reason that I know is think about plugging into this function rule. A of S equals S squared. So what's something we could plug in as a possible input? Six would be a possible input and the output could be 36. So six and 36 is on there. Does this graph look, look like it almost goes through six and 36? Just by eyeballing it, it does, right? It's just above 35, so that looks good. What's something else we could plug in? 749. 3 and 9. And the reason I know, like, this one is not 4 and a half and 20 is because I know 4.5 times 4.5 is not 20. Does anybody know what 4.5 times 4.5 is? Without, without a calculator? 21. Not quite. It's 22. No. What was the question? 4.5 times 4.5. Well, again, it's not either. If you look here, if you look at 4.5, what does it look like the output value is? It looks like it's, 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 a, it's actually a little above 20. Yeah, you use a calculator. Yeah, 20.25. Anyways. Any questions about how we found three input outputs, ordered pairs, whatever you want to call them? B, earlier we described the set of all possible input values as any number that was greater than or equal to zero. How would you describe the set of all possible output values? So if you think about the input, that's the X's. As long as we plug in a positive number or zero, we're good. What about the outputs? What about the Y's? What's the lowest Y value the graph goes to? Zero. zero. What's the highest Y value the graph goes to? But does it stop here? Because we could actually plug in 8, right? And we should get 64. And 9 would be 81. And 10 would be 100. And we're just getting farther off the graph, right? Because this could keep going. So what's the highest output value we could get? Infinity, right? Infinity. So 
How could we describe the outputs? We could say that's any number greater than or equal to zero. It's the same as the domain. It does matter. That's correct. On top. Are you are you thinking of congruent? Maybe if you've been in geometry land. Two, function R is defined as R of n equals forty n, where n is the number of campers. Is twenty a possible output for this situation? It's not. That's incorrect. When you're talking about 16, you're talking about input, where n is the number of campers. The output is the revenue made. How much money were they making? So could they have made $20 in any circumstance? No. What would have to happen to make $20? Half a camper, because 40 times a half would give the output of 20. But that doesn't make sense, so 20 is not a possible output. What about 100? Is that a possible output? No. How many campers would they need there? Uh, two, two and a half. Two and a half campers to make $100, which again is not possible. Which of these graphs appears like it could represent R more easily? Uh, and why? Right. So we could have five campers and make $200, or we could have six campers and make $240. But there's no values in between them that, we, that this graph could take on. So this one is the better graph, and this one cannot represent the function. There's several reasons, because you can't have between five and six campers, because it camp doesn't run if we have less than five campers, right? And they're still part of the graph here. It also doesn't run if there's more than 16. And we have the graph going over here past 16 as well. So several reasons why the first graph is bad. The second graph is good. So what's the set of all possible output values of R? So the outputs are the y's. So what's the lowest y value we could get? 200. What's the next lowest? So I listed them all out. Is there a way that we could explain this in words that might be a little bit shorter 
And I list them out because I think that's easier than giving a verbal description. Say again. So how do we say that? Okay, that's one way. It's not. It's not. It's not wrong. But we're talking about the outputs. So. Number of campers times 40. As long as the campers are between 5 and 16, that will work. Um, what I was thinking is, all of these, they're all multiples of 40. You guys remember what a multiple is? So what are the multiples of um, the multiples of 10? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So these are multiples of 40, but it's only the multiples of 40 between 200 and... I'm going to write it down here. Between 200 and 640. So the multiples of 40 that are between 200 and 640. What are the factors of 10? 2 and 5. 1 and 10. So I know most people, they don't know the difference between factors and multiples. You just get them confused which is which. Multiples are the things that are answers to multiplication problems past that number, right? So 40, 80, 120, 160, 200. The factors are what things multiply together to give me that number. So if they need at least $500... Yeah. So, like, what you can do is, looking at this graph, <coughs> you can say, I need $500. Well, $500 happens right here. So, what are the number of acceptable campers that are above that that works? Well, this is the first point above it, and it has to happen at 13 campers. Does everybody follow that? Go to where $500, we need it to be above $500. So let's look here. We're looking at a different function. 6 divided by x minus 2 is my function. We want to find the set of all possible input and output values of the function. So Claire created a table and evaluated f at some of the values of x. Along the way, she ran into some trouble. Well, let's find f of x for each x value Claire listed. So all we're doing is we're making an input-output list. So here she has input negative 10 in for x. So what would be the output if she plugged in negative 10 for x? So we could do 6 over negative 10 minus 2, which is 6 over negative 12, which is negative a half. You guys say negative two? Because you got something that's been ingrained in you since elementary school. Boom, get that. When you divide, you don't always divide the bigger number by the smaller number. Right? And I know when I when I was in elementary school, your teacher would always tell you when you divide, you put the big number inside the box. And the little number outside. All right, that's why y'all learn how to divide the strawberries. Yeah, well, that's not always true. If you do 49 divided by 7, that's right. If you have 7 divided by 49, then 7 goes inside the box. 49 divided by 9? Outside. Right? So 
it's not always the, it's like right here, I got 6 and 12. That's not 12 divided by 6, it's 6 divided by 12. 6 is on the inside of the box. So just be careful of that. They all meant well. They were trying to teach you good. Okay, what if you plugged in 0 for x? There would be 6 over 0 minus 2, which is 0 minus 2 is negative 2, which is negative 3. So if I plug in 0, I get an output of negative 3. Now what if I plugged in a half? Well, that would be 6 over 1 half minus 2. That would give me 6 over negative 3 halves. Or 6 over negative 1.5, which should give me... Negative four. If you plug in Two, six over two minus two, that would be six over zero, which is undefined. And there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no. Uh oh, it did say she ran into some trouble. Then what if I plugged in an 8? 6 over 8 minus 2 it would be 6 over 6, which is 1. one. So what error did she run into? You can never divide by zero. It's a divide by zero error. So when we start asking to find the domain of a function, there are two big errors that can be made. One of them is dividing by zero. And we'll learn about the other one later. But we always have to check to make sure we're not going to be dividing by zero. On our graphing calculators that you all picked up on your way in, because I've assigned you one. Yeah? You're going to be clicking Y equals. Click the fraction button. And then put in 6 over, and then in the denominators, X minus 2. Does everyone know where the X button is? No. It's right beside the alpha button. It says X, comma, T, comma, theta, comma, N. That is your variable X. So inside the Y equals, you put in 6 over X minus 2. Is everybody good there? No. Okay, well, let's, let's let me just... Let's just all look at it together. Because I forget, I forget times of 
y equals. So I'm clearing. Is everyone here? Is somebody having a problem? If you get stuck somewhere and you can't get out, you can always click second mode. It'll bring you back to the main screen. That's how we quit. So I'm at y equals. <clears throat> I'm putting in a fraction. 6 over x minus 2. Is everybody here? Now let's all click zoom. And let's click 6. That way we all are looking at the same graph, no matter what. So there's the graph of 6 over x minus 2. What kind of things do you notice about the graph? There, there are any points at the, uh, at 2 at all. Yeah, so if you look at when the x value is 2, where's the x value 2? Well, let's go and draw a vertical line at 2. Does it ever hit that vertical line? No. Huh. Because what happens when you plug in 2 for x? Error. You don't, get, you don't get 0. You get 0 in the denominator, right? which gives a divide by 0 error. So, hmm, hmm. It says, use the calculator now to compute the value that us and Claire had trouble computing. And what do you notice about that computation? So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a table of values. So let's go to, let's all click um, second window. It should say table setup. Is everybody here? Let's make the table start be zero. And let's make the delta table be 1. So you need 0 and 1. Is everybody good? Make sure both these are on auto. <coughs> we click second window. We ready? Now let's click second graph. And it makes a table of values for us. Right? If we plug in 0, the y value is negative 3. If we plug in 1, we get negative 6. If we plug in 2, we get error. error. Huh. Huh. So not only did us and Claire have problems, um, the calculator has problems. Guess what? Math has problems. You can never divide by zero. So for four, if we had to describe the domain of the function f, what could we plug into this function? Anything but two. Anything but two. If I plug in two, I get an error. But I could plug in anything else I wanted to. So the answer to four there is the domain is all real numbers Except two. So right here it says, let's evaluate the, f or it says, are you ready for more? Why do you think the graph of a function f looks the way it does? Why are there two parts that split at x equals 2, with one curving down as it approaches x equals 2 from the left, and the other cur curving up as it approaches x equals 2 from the right? So when I look at this graph, all right, just like we talked about, let's look at what happens when I get x values that are really close to 2 from the left. So like over here. So let's go to, if I click um, second table set, it tells me to plug in 1.8. So let's put in 1.8. And let's make our delta table be 0.1. So now if I click second table, 
Look at the y values. If I plug in 1.8, I get negative 30. 1.9 is negative 60. Okay, what about negative, or what about 1.95? Okay, well, let's go back in here. Let's go to the table start. Let's start at 1.95. Let's see what that gives us. So second table. It's negative 120. Wow. What about 1.999? So I'm going to put in 1.999, and I'm going to put point. Oh, one. No, let's do more than that. Let's do point oh 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 one. So my delta table is point oh 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 one. And if I go to the table, look what happens if I plug in one point nine nine. And as I just, you can just scroll down here. Look as the x's get really really close to two. What's happening to the y values? They're heading to what number? The x's are heading to 2. What are the y values heading to? Does it ever reach the bottom? So what's it? It's heading to negative infinity. Heading to negative infinity. These numbers are getting more and more negative. More and more negative. But now what do you think happens if I approach it from the other side? What about the positive twos? It's like, like, so they say, what if I was plugging in 2.1? So just think about now, if I headed in this direction, you see how I'm getting closer and closer to 2 from the right? What's happening to the Y's here? The, the Y's aren't getting closer to zero. Think about it. As I'm going, I'm going up, I'm getting closer to two from the right. Look at the Y values. We're getting closer and closer to positive infinity, right? We're getting bigger and bigger, larger and larger numbers. And so we can see that again from the graph. As X gets close to 2 from the left, notice how the Ys just start nosediving, right? They're heading to negative infinity. And what if I approach 2 from the right side? So coming in this direction, what's happening to the Ys? They're going up forever, towards positive infinity. So that is because this is called an asymptote. Okay, and we'll talk more about asymptotes way later on in Algebra 1, and more so in Algebra 2 and Pre-Cal.